So right. anyway, so uh, introduction to Packet Radio. Everybody, or Kelly, is my audio okay? And is the video coming in? Um. Or I didn't share my screen, maybe. Nope, not yet. Okay. I think I had to stop sharing first. Okay. Let me go back. Share my screen. Okay, Ken, you're good to go. We can see it. Okay, here we go. Introduction to Packet. Uh, this is just like Kelly was saying, this is an overview. Uh, we're not going to get into really any of the technical side of this. We're not going to show you how to set your uh, TNC and your radio up. Uh, but just want to throw a little bit out there to maybe make you uh, aware of just what it, what it is, uh, Packet. And um, whether you want to dig into it a little deeper. And like Kelly said, I, I don't mind, I, I really enjoy actually helping uh, people get on packet. And I've done so with a few people around here, the La Crosse area, but also I've, I've worked with quite a few on the HF side. So anyway, so again, it's a, it's an overview and we're not going to, uh, get too technical here because hey I can't <laughs> so anyway uh, for those hams that uh, were licensed uh, before 1990 this might just be a refresher many of you guys have either ran packet you people I should say or had a buddy that did um, so it, it may just be hey I haven't run it for a long time and uh, I'd like to see kind of just a little refreshment or refresher on it. Uh, for those of you, of you that have earned your license in more recent years, this is possibly a first encounter. And I want to make sure you know that this is not going to be about APRS. To me, it's it's two different worlds, even though it, it, it they both use packet. What is packet? Well, there's a few things that are going to come up here with this. Uh, packet is one of the earliest digital modes. It's been around for a long time. Not going to go into the history because there's quite a bit of information just on the history of packet. Um, it's been referred to as a mature digital mode, which it is. It's been around a long time. But if you want to talk about mature digital modes, uh, earlier modes yet were CW and RTTY. And even though a lot of people say, well, packet's slow and there's all these faster things, you know, it's, it's error-free uh, communication. And there's a few other uh, bennies that go along with that. Um, CW, not so error-free, especially if somebody starts to crank up the speed, I lose, I lose copy pretty fast. And anybody that operated RTTY and had a few static crashes knows there's no error-free there either. Uh, not that they're, I, I, I like both modes, but uh, packet on the other hand is going to get you uh, pretty much air free copy on the other end. Its official designation is AX.25 and was adapted from a protocol suite called X.25. Um, if you uh, pretty much it's if you ever had dial up modem with your computer back in the day it's it's almost the same thing other than the speed you're running at uh with a few other uh, changes to uh for connecting and disconnecting and a few things like that uh packet radio is a digital radio communication mode used to send packets of data um, a packet is actually a little piece of a message. Uh, message is broke down into, into little pieces and, and that's what a packet is. Uh, it's very similar to how packets of data are transferred between nodes on the internet. Uh, packet radio uh, can also be used to transmit long distances. I've uh, even with the solar conditions, uh, although they're starting to uh, come up now, I've uh, had a few DX contacts um, in the last six months uh, using packet. I've worked uh, a few stations uh, in Europe and also I believe Costa Rica and Cuba. So 
It's not just a uh, VHF only mode. Here's a little more technical. Uh, a packet is a group of bits or binary digits, which are made up of ones and zeros, structured and standardized uh, that has contained within the addressing information uh, within, uh, within it, the addressing information, message, error checking, and control information. The information is organized into a frame. Uh, a frame is a set size template for sending information. The uh, amateur X.25 protocol or AX.25 is a manner in which we send frames. Uh, some people actually said it shouldn't have been called packet because it, it's, it more has to do with these frames. But uh, both the sending and receiving TNCs are programmed to encode into frames to be sent and to decode frames uh, that are received. All right, what are, the, what are the components that make up a packet station? Well, you've got a terminal, a TNC, and a radio. But we can go on to uh, see a little bit more about those here. The terminal, back in the day, which I missed, but I remember them, uh, some of the guys, the early guys got on with what they call a dumb terminal. It was not a computer. It looked like a computer. In fact, that's pretty much, I think, one below or close to it. Maybe that's an old TRS-80 or something. But uh, anyway, they, dumb terminals were used to connect to a mainframe computer, like in a place like train company or any big business used mainframe computers. And and uh, everybody didn't have a little desktop computer. They, they connected to the mainframe with a dumb terminal. But hams were able to use those uh, to connect to their their uh, terminal node or TNC, uh, terminal node controllers. So nowadays, pretty much we're using computers either running a terminal emulator program to emulate it, an old terminal, such as PuTTY or P-U-T-T-Y, Hyper Terminal, or IP Serial, which is part of the Outpost uh, PMM suite. Hyper Terminal used to be included on all the old computers because that's how that's how you uh, would dial up uh, with your, your old 56K modem. Uh, also, it, it uh, could be a, a computer running packet specific software. And here's a couple examples, Easy Term and Sound Modem by UZ7HO, quite popular. Uh, BPQ by John G8BPQ. Uh, and he also does the uh, Linux version of of that program, uh, Lin BPQ, and there's also another one, uh, JNOS. So JNOS and Lin BPQ run on uh, Linux, and can and quite popular on the uh, Raspberry Pis. So there's a lot of guys out there running that stuff on on Raspberry Pis. So then you've got your TNC or sound card. The TNC uh, terminal node controller like I'm showing down on the right, is that that has got all the uh, the works. It's kind of like the works in a drawer, the works in a box. That's the, it's got everything to do with, with uh, doing the packet magic. And that one would just be con uh, connected to the terminal or the computer running a terminal program and all you would do with that that computer would be to connect to that TNC to either retrieve a message from its uh, mailbox or to send a message or to maybe to connect to another station through that but that that unit does has all the brains all the chips it's um, quite sophisticated the other would be the, the in the center is a KISS terminal or a TNC. The KISS TNC is kind of a, in a way dumbed down because it's relying on a program on the computer to do a lot of the work or most of the work actually that a real TNC would do. So there's there's much less uh, going on in a in a KISS TNC because the computer is the one that's that's uh, performing all the work. And then uh, then there's the uh, software TNC. Now there's actually software out there. A few, a few people uh, 
have some real good stuff like uh, I've already mentioned use at 7HO with uh, sound modem and also dire wolf are two very good uh, sound card uh, TNCs um, and you would or uh, software TNCs and you'd use that with a sound card similar I, I use the signal links here for for most of my stuff uh, but there's other options uh, out there So then you got the radio. You can do a packet on VHF, UHF, or HF. And uh, you, you, uh, one nice thing about some of the newer radios, like the I show there, the IC7300, uh, it has an internal sound card. So you don't even have to add the cost or the, the wiring uh, of, of one more uh, piece of equipment. And uh, both of these have uh, data well, the the um, the IC seventy three hundred works off a USB cable and does all, everything over that, but uh, like the uh, Linko on the left, that has a data jack in the back, so you can even leave your microphone hooked up while you're you're connected to uh, your TNC. So here's the, the the elements kind of put together. You got your computer, and since that's a real live uh, TNC there. The, the the full full blown TNC, you'd probably just be running um, terminal uh, emulation uh, program on the computer, and then there you've got your uh, HT, which uh, I uh, this slide I, I didn't come I got this off the web and in most places I don't I don't know that an HT will cut it unless you have an external antenna, but I think they were just showing uh, the pieces of the puzzle there. So earlier I mentioned easy term by UZ7HO and here's a picture of one of my um, terminal screens. I don't currently normally use this program, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, I do when I go portable and once in a while here to test with one of the other uh, one of the other hams on packet and it's a very nice very well written uh, software, works slick and it's easy to uh, set up. And here's the uh, the sound modem that you'd use with that by the same author. Uh, again, easy to set up. This one has a uh, waterfall on the bottom, which isn't moving because it's a still shot here. And normally you'd see you'd see uh, information on the in the white uh, areas of the screen. So let's take a look at, at a terminal window <clears throat> and send a message. Uh, I've also got some commands. I, I, I was going to have the commands and show you commands first, but I think I changed it to uh, the commands are, are after this. So here's a, a terminal window and I've already connected to the TNC with this. So the TNC has given me a command prompt. That little uh, CMD is uh, is the command prompt coming from the from the TNC, uh, and this is IP serial uh, part of Outpost, and it's a very nice uh, a very nice terminal uh, emulator, very nice. So next we're gonna we're gonna try to connect to uh, Kelly. So here at that same command prompt, I've got the C for connect. And then I've got her uh, personal bulletin board uh, system call sign there, uh, KD9LQW-1. The dash one is the uh, secondary station ID uh, indicating her, her uh, I will just say mailbox for short. <laughs> PBBS gets a little tough to roll off the tongue. So anyway, I'm, con I'm gonna connect to her mailbox there and uh, on the next screen, we'll see what, what happened. Aha, uh -huh, it worked. Um, the second after my connect up on the top line, it uh, responded with connected to and her call. And that next line with the KPC3, well, that's the type of uh, TNC Kelly is running. The 6.0 is the version and I'm, and I, I, don't know exactly what the HM dollar sign is, but this is information that the 
the other TNC um, would use to uh, for commands and stuff to know what commands this thing uh, would use. Below that is the uh, the bytes available for messaging yet, since she's only got one message in there, which is number thirteen. Uh, she started out with a hundred uh, k, a hundred thousand bytes, and with that one message, now she's down to ninety nine seven ninety two. So there's room for a few more messages in there. Below that is the command line. Uh, it's it's basically waiting for a command right now. Her TNC sent that and is waiting for a command. And I'll just go over the commands real quick. The B is for buy. That's what that's the command. And these are short versions. You can you can write them out long if you feel like it, but uh, the short version works for me. So B is for buy. That's that's when you're done. You do a B and enter and you're out of there. J is short for just heard. Uh, who did I, who did her TNC hear lately? You know what what other T what other packet stations are out there? Um, so you can click that and it'll give you a list of of what uh, TNCs uh, Kelly's TNC has heard. K is to kill. When you're done when you're done with a message, you would kill it. And one way is to use the K and then that number. Let's say Kelly was done with that message. She could go into her own mailbox and do a K and a space 13 and kill that message, get rid of it. L is to list the messages. Um, there's, there's a few variations and we'll see that in a minute. R is to read the message. And S is if, if you're gonna send the message. And in this case, I'm going to, or you can type out help and it gives you all of these commands and you're gonna see that in a minute. Uh, and and a, a little better explanation and there's some variations to several of these commands to get a little more information out of it but those are your your basic ones so here I uh, if you go down to the s kd9 lqw I'm sending a message to to uh, Kelly and then uh, The subject is hello. And then it came back and said, go ahead and enter your message and end with a control Z or a slash EX on a single line. So when you're all done with a message, uh, most people use the slash EX and it has to be on a, on a single line. It can't be at the end of a line uh, or it, it just thinks that's part of the message. But when it's on a line of its own, you, slash, you hit the slash EX and that will end the uh, the message. So here's the little message. Hi Kelly, this is a demo uh, connecting to your PBBS. See you later in 73. There's my slash EX on a line of its own. It's telling me the message is saved and now it's going back to say, okay, now what do you wanna do? Well, if I wanted, I could leave a message for Steve, her husband on the, on there. I do another send, another S, and then put his call in there and send him. Um, or I could list the messages. I could, you know, to see if I've got one there. But in this case, um, in this case, we're going to hit the B down, scroll down a little ways there. We're going to hit the B, and it's going to disconnect us. So that's, that's kind of a, just a rundown through uh, sending a message. And that's about as easy as it is. Um, there's, not, there's not a lot to it. Here is just an example of, I signed into her node call, uh, which is basically just her packet station call with, with a dash, she's got a SSID of dash seven. And here I just wanted to hit that J to see who she just heard. And there's a partial list of the stations that she heard on uh, 12.4. So that that's uh, you know simple commands. Here's here's some uh, here's here's the full list. If you do the help on her TNC, there's the list you're going to see for node commands. The ones that I have in red over here 
are the are the real common ones, you know, and uh, there are a few variations to those, but those three commands will get you a long way on the node. Now we'll go to BBS commands, and and all these commands are listed at the bottom of, of when you sign on, so it's not like you have to remember everyone. They're right there, they're right there for you. So here's BBS commands, and some of them are the same. You got the by, you've got the J for just heard. Uh, I've got LM down there for list mine. You can also do just the L for list. Um, so there's the very there's where the variations come in. Uh, with a station that has bulletins, you can uh, click the LB for list bulletins. Uh, but you know, most people only use a. a two or three of these, um, and, and that's about it. And here's a few more, though. You, th there's the K that I talked about for kill, or, and KM is kill mine. R is the read, like I said before, and RM is read mine. And there's the S, and there's a few variations of the send. You can send a bulletin, you can send by SB, you can send a uh, private with SP, or you can send traffic with ST. So, and that's all there in the, in the help file, uh, if you uh, can't remember. And there are TNC commands, but we're not gonna get into those. In fact, you're gonna see them on the video, and I don't want anybody to freak out at all those commands. Um, there's a lot of parameters that go into setting a TNC up, but the sweet thing is the, uh, defaults on almost every one of them is okay that you don't need to mess with it so on a tnc uh some of the biggest things you need to do are enter your call in a couple of places and uh that's that's about it you know most most of the uh, commands in a tnc are the defaults will will work just fine so when you see that list don't uh <laughs> don't freak out because it's it's a it's a long one. Uh, packet frequencies, um, the ones that I monitor, uh, 14.105 megahertz lower side sideband. That's uh, what they call network 105. It's been around for 30 years. That's been a, a go-to frequency. You go there during the day and you'll have people all over the country uh, on, on that frequency. Uh, but with the fact that 14 uh, or 20 megs goes to sleep at night yet, a lot of us uh, switch for the evening and overnight to 7.104 and then uh, QSY back to 20 meters uh, sometime in late morning. And then the local frequency, in fact, it's more than local, it's, it's pretty much statewide is 145.030, and uh, that's what we monitor here. And along, besides my regular packet station or, or with my pa packet station, on that same frequency, I do run a, a Winlink RMS gateway. So that's, that's actually, uh, that's actually the, it for the little presentation. And now we're gonna do that little movie. Um, Kelly, is that okay if we move right on, or what do you think? Um, yeah, we should be able to. Um, there was just one relevant question that um, was regarding your presentation. Um, if this presentation can be available, uh, the slide, if the slides can be available, and um, yeah, I can send them out um, if that's all right with you, Ken that I could share your slides. Um, oh, yeah. And then I'm also recording this. So if um, someone, if you know someone that wanted to attend tonight and they are not able to, I will have this on recording as well, so. Well, okay, because Rick, Rick was wondering and I, I thought we could always do another one, but that's, that's fine. Yep, uh, and we can always do another one, uh, maybe uh, one, uh, a Packet Radio 102 maybe. Uh, yeah. on maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, on here when I, I say uh, for any information and, and uh, if somebody has any questions or, uh, you know, needs help setting something up, I, I, I really do enjoy helping uh, people get, get their stuff going. 
Um, so that would be just fine with me. So don't be afraid to um, don't be afraid to give me a, a holler. So we'll go to the video. Do I need to share that screen now with you? Or can you see it? Um, we are still seeing your presentation, so you might have to unshare that and reshare. Okay. Yep. Okay, now you got it? Yep, now we see it. Okay, here we go. Hello, YouTube Prepper, Sister Cobb Prepper. I'm back at the retreat location. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the power. So, Ken, hold on in just a minute. Can you stop that? You yep. might have to, when you when you click share video, there might be an option there to share computer audio when you go through the step. So, right now, we were just hearing distant video sound. So. You may have to unshare and reshare again. Hmm. So Anything there? I'm back out at the retreat location. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the power of packet radio, the ability to communicate digitally without. Did you have audio there, Kelly? Oh, yep, yep. It's still it was still kind of the same. So if if anything, if you can turn it up, maybe. Okay. The internet. This was a lost art back in the 1980s and early 90s. Amateur radio operators had packet radio networks that span the globe. You could send a message from the East Coast to the United States, to the West Coast, to Asia, and back with no problems, and that was before the Internet. So with the advent of the Internet and cheap computers, packet radio fell out of favor, and the art was kind of lost. The subject matter experts that wrote the software and designed the networks moved on to other interests, and today there's virtually no packet radio networks left anywhere in the world. There's a few, but it's hard to find one. Well, today we're going to demonstrate how you can set one up and get started reintroducing the lost art of packet radio. I'm going to walk over to the shed here and show you the station that I have set up for today's video. That's better. Guys, for the mess in the shed. The plan today is to go mobile and to communicate with this station up here on the bench here in the shed. I have a Yaesu FT2600M connected to Cantronics Cam XL terminal node controller. And as you can see there, there's a white flashing mail. And that's the subject of today's video. We're going to demonstrate how you can send and receive digital messages using packet radio and leave it on the modem itself. Each one of Cantronics modems contain a bulletin board system or a mailbox. So you can remotely send messages to this station, address to other amateur radio operators, leave them on the bulletin board system, and when they log in, they can actually list all the messages and read the messages addressed to their station. So it's a very effective means of digital communications and is really applicable to emergency preparedness and prepping, especially if the grid goes down, the internet goes down. Without the internet, most people could never communicate digitally. However, with packet radio, amateur radio operators can always have a means to communicate digitally, even if the internet goes down. I'll roll over now to the mobile station and show you the components before we head off the mountain and actually do a demonstration. All right, guys, I've got the mobile components laid out on the banister here in a block diagram fashion. The first component, of course, is the laptop computer because we're communicating digitally. I'm going to use a program called HyperTerminal. HyperTerminal used to be included in Windows operating systems, but they stopped, I think, with the release of Windows 7, so I actually had to buy a copy. To the right of the laptop computer is a serial cable. I need this to interface the laptop computer to the Cantronics modem. My laptop computer, like many today, does not have a serial plug in the back of it, so I had to buy a USB to serial adapter 
and a standard DB9 to DB25 serial cable to connect to the back of the Cantronics terminal node controller. Below the terminal node controller, I have Harden Power Systems QRP Ranger. I'm going to use that to power the Cantronics Packet Communicator 3 Plus terminal node controller that's held on there with the bungee cords. To the right of the modem and the power supply, I have the cable that will interface the modem to the radio. This cable was made by Les at handmadeparts.com. I'll put a link down below. Great people to work with. All you have to do is email them the type of radio you have and the type of modem you have. And a week later, you get a perfect cable every time. I've got a dozen cables from Les and I've never had a problem. So this is my cable that will interface the modem to my Yaesu handheld radio. Today we're going to operate with FT60R, Yaesu handheld radio. This is a dual band radio. We're going to operate in the VHF mode for today's video. So that comprises the mobile configuration. We're going to throw all this in the truck, head off the mountain, get some lunch, and send and receive some packet radio messages from the vehicle to the mountain here and leave those messages on the Cantronics Cam XL in the shed. And then later on, we'll come back, access that packet modem there in the shed, and list all the messages that were saved on the modem like an old fashioned bulletin board. Let's get this all packed up, get off the mountain, get some chow, and get operating. All right, guys, we've reached our mobile operating position where we can demonstrate packet radio. We're in the area food line parking lot. And if any of you have read Max Alexander's book, Patriot Rising, this is the food line that was the evacuation point when the Russians attacked the town of Romney. And I'll put a link down below to Max's book. In the back seat of the truck here, I have my neighbor, N3LJA Pete. He's the control operator for this demonstration. We've programmed his call sign into the Cantronics Packet Communicator 3 Plus modem. We've got the ASU FT60R all set up and ready to go, and the laptop computer running the hyper terminal. So what I'll do here is I'm going to pass the camera off to my cameraman, Pete, N3LJA, and we're actually going to use the desktop capturing software to show you the commands that I enter to check the bulletin board to see what mail is waiting for us, and we'll send a message up to the bulletin board system. Again, we're doing all this without any internet. We're just using packet radio, and we're storing these messages on the terminal node controller up in the shed. So let me pass the camera off to Pete. We'll get the desktop capture software up and running, and we'll show you the magic of packet radio and how you can use it to support emergency communications. Recording? Recording. Okay, guys, we've got the laptop computer set up here. I'm using the desktop capture software. So what I'm going to do is open up Hyper Terminal. Again, I had to buy this. The old Windows operating systems used to include this. I think I spent 60 bucks. But it's the only program you'll need to do packet radio when using Cantronics modems. Now, I already have a default configuration set up. So I'm going to go to File, Open, KPC3. We're going to hit Open again. And I'm just going to hit the carriage return or the return and see if I get a command. Now, these modems are very command driven. So what I'm going to do is type help. And it's going to list all the optional commands that I can put in this modem. Now, if I want to know anything about a specific command, I'll do a question mark. And let's see, let's pick a command. I'm going to put CWID. CWID. Let's see what that command is all about. And we'll hit enter. And this tells me how I can program that. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen now. We'll come up here to edit, clear. I'm going to hit return again to get a command line. And this modem here in the truck is configured as N3LJ Pete's call sign. And now I'm going to connect to the modem up in the shed. That's K1DOS-1. The dash one is the designator for the mailbox. So I'm going to do C. That's connect. That's the connect command. Space K1DOS-1. I'm telling my radio here to go out and connect there, and I want to connect to the mailbox. I hit enter, and we're connected, and this is the response I got back. It tells me how much memory is available, and the commands I can enter are B for buy. I don't know what J is. K for kill, that's how you delete a message, or L for list. R for read, S for send. So let's type L and get a list of what's up there. And there's one message on the bulletin board from me to N3LJA, address to Pete. We did this last night as a test, need more beer. Now, if I wanted to read that message, I would type R, and then the message number is three. 
and then the station will transmit that down. Here we go. Next trip to town, please get more beer before the walkers arrive. All right, so we've read that message. We got it here in the truck. We'll go in the food line. We'll get some more beer before the walkers arrive. So we're going to hit K. We're going to kill that message, three, and get rid of it. Now that message will be gone. And we can confirm that by typing L for list. And we get nothing back. I'm going to clear the screen here again. Okay, so we got a fresh command line, so I'm going to hit send command to K1DOS. I'm going to address this to my station up there. Hit return. And now it's asking for a subject. At food lion got beer. We didn't get any beer, but that's our subject. Now it's going to say type in the message. On the way back with can't type here. Supplies. ETA, 20 minutes. Now I hit a carriage return, and to end the message, I do slash EX. Hit return, and that'll post that to the bulletin board. And we can confirm that that message is waiting by hitting L to get a list. Okay, I had a little technical issue. I had to hit the clear screen, so we're going to go ahead and confirm that that message is up there on the bulletin board. We're going to hit L, the L command, and the radio should respond and give us a list. So there it is. We got the message. It's now message number five from N3LJA here in the truck to K1DOS. That's now sitting on the modem up at the shed. When I get up there, I can actually go in locally or with my radio, connect and read that message. So there's a good example of how you can use packet radio as part of your emergency communications plan and emergency preparedness. We're going to do a lot more videos on packet radio, but I want to do a quick field demonstration on the bulletin board system. So I think this is a really cool feature of packet radio and kind of a lost art that I think should really be revived, especially in the emergency preparedness community. I'd like to say thank you to my neighbor Pete and 3 lja for acting as cameraman and control operator for this mobile operations video. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Tom's Prepper with a quick demonstration of packet radio bulletin board systems. And we're going to enter the last command here and close this video out for B for five. This kept from that station. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, <clears throat> Kelly, are you still there? I sure am. All right, well, there's, there was the video from the comms prepper. You did a good job. And uh, I guess that pretty much concludes anything that I, uh, I have from my end. Okay, um, let me see, let me do some some uh, work here. I'm looking to see, okay, does any, I guess we can open it up to um, questions or anything. If you have any questions, raise your hand or type it in the, the box there in the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, okay, we've got a question here. The bulletin board is the only on the TNC. No power, no messages. You have a comment to that, Ken? So it, it's the bulletin board, it's only in a TNC, and if you have no power, you have no messages. Um, that, that would be, I guess, correct, except uh, most TNCs run on 12 volt DC. And if you've got a radio running on 12 volt DC, um, there's no reason you couldn't be running your TNC. In fact, I think I power, power at least one of mine right off of my uh, 
battery backup here. So it, it all depends upon your setup. You, if, if, if you don't have battery for your radio, you, yeah, it won't matter anyway. But I, I may not have the question right, but uh, if I don't, uh, run it by us again. Okay. Let us know if that answers your question. Um, let's see here. I just wanted to um, make it, okay, it does answer his question, Ken. Okay. Um, I wanted to make sure it was clear. Um, he had said he was talking about his hyper terminal and it cost him $60. Um, that's, that's an option he took. Um, you, there are free, right, Ken? There are free terminals that everybody can use. They don't have to spend money. If there's a very cheap way of doing this. Oh, um, absolutely. You yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, in fact, I was surprised. This guy's really sharp. If you've seen any of his videos, he's 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 actually a sharp cookie. But why why he bought Hyper Terminal is beyond me because um, uh, that's what uh, IP Serial will do for you for free. Plus, you get the the great program Outpost PMM, uh, which is Packet Message Manager, or uh, P U T T Y or Putty. And there's other ones. Uh, I, I'm a kind of amazed that he spent money uh, for an old program that was really designed around uh, dial-up modems. Right. Exactly. Um, and matter of fact, um, when we got my packet up and running, we were able to buy used TNCs and obviously free terminal. So, and then the only thing I, other than the TNC I had to buy was the wires um, to, to connect the TNC to my, to my uh, laptop. So it's very, you can do this, you can get by with it very inexpensive, right, Ken? Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, it's, it's coming up with a TNC or, uh, well, I'll start with the TNC. If you can come up with a TNC, I bought a few of them off of uh, QTH.com. Uh, I bought uh, them at Hamfest or Swap Swap Meets. Uh, you don't necessarily have to run out and buy a new one. And then you can also, right now, for my normal everyday packet station, I don't run any hardware TNC. I've got them. I've got a pile of them right now. I'm I'm collecting them, I think. But I I use everything is sound sound driven right now. Uh, so I use sound modem uh, with with uh, I I don't use the uh, easy term program right now. I have a different. I have I run BPQ for my packet uh, station. And uh, but yeah, pick up. You know, you can run a sound if you if you've already on one of the digital modes. If you run FT8 or anything like that, chances are you're you're already um, you already have what you might need to get on HF packet. You know, right right in your shack if you're already running some kind of a digital mode. Uh, but otherwise, for VHF, you know, you can also run sound a sound uh, system a sound modem, which is again what i'm doing uh and so cabling you know i mean if you have to buy a sound card like a signal link that's going to be some expense um there's more and more of those on the used market because there's more and more radios coming out with built-in sound cards but uh yeah it, it, there's there's different ways of doing it uh, but uh inexpensive is always best as long as it works you know but uh Watch, watch the swap meets and once they start up again and uh, things like that. Okay, cool. Um, we do have one on the chat here. Um, he's retired and now think about getting back into packet again. Uh, he was in it for a while, a long time ago. Um, he was wondering what happened to the old standard freak of 144.390. Uh, he hear packets are going on. He hear packets going on that freak. So, 
He's wondering um, what's up with the 14503 Oh, uh, The 14503 is, is kind of a Wisconsin state packet frequency. I'm not even aware of the other uh, one mentioned. Um, most of most of all of the packet VHF frequencies I am aware of are all in the 145 range. Um, I get in uh, once in a while through an internet connection to uh, up the North Shore of Minnesota and uh, Upper Michigan, and that's 145.010. I know of people on 145.090, but I'm I'm not familiar with uh, anything in the 144 range. But I'm not. It's it's probably out there, but I just don't know who it is or where they are. And uh, being VHF, I I don't know. They, they they could if you're hearing them and you're from around here they can't be too far away cool um and um juno county ec adds that the 145 610 is the wind link freak so yeah and i know minnesota uses i think 145.67 for their packet stuff yeah but um yeah there's kind of a there's kind of a state I think there's a state primary and a, and a secondary uh, kind of a digital for uh, Windlink. Right, and that would most likely be probably used in uh, an event that you, we need to connect with the state um, mm -hmm. on an individual basis. Um, and just a reminder, guys, if you have questions you can and you'd like to, instead of type it out, you can just raise your hand and I, I can allow you to talk instead of typing it out if you would like to go that way. Um, another question is for you, Ken, um, what are the limitations on distance on VHF mode between stations? Is this similar to phone in simplex or is it possible to transmit over greater distance? Uh, it, it's probably similar. You might get by with a little further. And, and of course, around here, it's, it's all about terrain, um, line of sight, you know. Right now, um, Sean, uh, KD9K, K, K, what's your call, Sean? Hey, KG, K, anyway, Sean, uh, <laughs> I can't think of it. it you know, we're pretty much line of sight. He, he's north of me. But it's fairly, fairly good. It's like right up the highway kind of, but still it's maybe 15 miles. And he comes in here 5759, five, you know, and it's all simplex. Uh, whereas Kelly over by Sparta, you know, we got a lot of hills in there. And she's usually coming in at a S3. And it's kind of like sometimes it's a weak S3 and sometimes it's a, a strong S3. Uh, so. But it's it's you're you're still talking VHF, uh, although it, it it may be a hair better because it's digital uh, than voice. But uh, you still got the same limitations with with the terrain and and all that. Right, and then that doesn't even touch the hopping through people's nodes and going across long distances, um, jumping from right. node to node to node. Right. You've got the more people you get on, uh, that's the thing right now, Kelly and I have no one between us to go through, um, because you can, you can go through other nodes or digipeters to connect to somebody further out that you can't even hear. But um, right now we have no one between Sparta and La Crosse, and we have no one between um, like Sparta and Nasita, where there's a very good station uh, uh, that has quite a reach. Um, but you know, so that 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 lengthens or that that helps you get further out by by all means. Yeah. Um, there was a correction to the 144.390. Um, he says he was, he may be thinking of APRS operation, which... Yeah, actually, that's exactly right. Yeah, I should have caught that. Yeah, that's APRS. Okay. All righty. I'm trying to see. I'm going to see if there's any other questions here. Otherwise, um, we could probably, if we don't have anything right now, we can probably see if uh, Sean wants to say a few words. Um, and do some, you know, his experience with packet. 
Um, and then we can maybe see if there's any other um, questions after Sean's done speaking. So I am going to get Sean, allow him to talk. And uh, Sean, I should, you should be able to talk now, I think. Okay. Can you hear one? Yep. Yeah, um, I think I've been doing a packet for about maybe a month to two months. Uh, originally didn't know hardly anything about it. My ma main interest um, was originally uh, getting set up for uh, for Winlink Express and, and doing that and Ken gave the, given the presentation back in July. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend that as around my birthday. And uh, I really wanted to get involved in that. And uh, I got all the necessary equipment for, for Winlink. We worked through that. And Ken says, you know, you really need to get into uh, packet radio. And uh, I kind of fumbled around with RTTY for a while and, and Winlink and uh, finally contacted him and said, yeah, let's, uh, let's kind of get into this. Uh, what all do I need? And he basically said, well, you have all the software or all of the hardware already. Um, you just need to download some, some software. Um, so we did, um, I think it's the easy term um, and, and the other software and uh, step through the different things. And within, you know, a very short time, I was on packet radio kind of, um, you know, calling him up and asking him questions. How do I do this? And fumbling around on my own, uh, making mistakes. And uh, he, he, you know, send me a text and make a correction and stuff like that. But it's just been a lot of fun exploring this mode, uh, making contacts uh, throughout the country, locally, within, within the state, uh, down in Florida. Um, actually made a contact uh, to a guy over in Scotland um, so that was pretty interesting. Um, I, I don't find myself uh, very comfortable speaking, so um, it, it's kind of nice to be able to type out a message and uh, try to put something in a coherent uh, uh, phrase uh, to, to make contact with somebody and, and send it in an email, but do it over the radio. I really enjoy um, the fact that you don't need to rely on a lot of, um, um, I guess, a commercial commercial network to be able to communicate to somebody. So I've really been enjoying it. Um, just with a minimal investment, I already had a Yaesu 857D. Um, I purchased the, the signal length for, I think, around 116 to $120. So it was really a a pretty minor investment when it um, comes to ham, ham radio equipment. And uh, I'm off and running. I've got the, uh, the Outpost uh, PMM that uh, Ken was talking about. I've been exploring that and, and learning the nuances and uh, just kind of having a, a generally good time. I've um, actually making an investment to, to get a better antenna to try to reach out further. Occasionally I can reach uh, Kelly's uh, station, but uh, I'm hoping to have more out, outreach. So um, that's kind of my spiel. I've uh, been enjoying it a lot and I do definitely see that there is a potential for this to be used in an emergency uh, situation. And I think uh, everyone involved in Aries Races um, uh, should, should get involved with the, this aspect of ham radio. So that's pretty much what I have to say, folks. Your mic, Kelly. Got it. Thanks, Ken. Um, I just want to thank you, Sean. Uh, I wanted to thank you for coming on and, and sharing your experience with getting involved here and, um, and um, seeing if there is any questions anybody has uh, for Ken or Sean um, or myself, I guess. Um, I do think that some of the issues that they have connecting with me is that I'm just happen to be in a, an RF hole, which is not a very good uh, location. 
um, it's we have a hard time just getting ourselves out of out of um, communicating all together in, on phone and everything. So um, I think if if I don't I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, any any one of you have anything else to add? That's a, that's a negative. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, Charles has a question. Let me see if I can allow him to talk here. Okay, Charles, go ahead. Uh, Ken, uh, could I get your email again? I just, I missed the chance to write it down when you had it on the screen. Yeah, I just put it up on my, uh, by my picture now. Uh, you got it Ken. there? WGN. Yes, I do. Yeah. Thank yeah, and that's, that, that, uh, or that's um, one of them, or you can just check uh, if you forget. Uh, it's it, I'm good on QRZ.com. And uh, yeah, one on one, anybody that wants uh, more information or help setting something up, like if you've already got, you know, uh, if you're already doing digital and you want to get on, on, uh, packet on the HF side, <clears throat> you know, it would be very simple with, uh, with free software. Uh, well, actually I'm kind of limited. I'm i I'm in an apartment and I have one antenna. So, uh, right now the radio I have on there, uh, is my, mostly my voice communication, but I'm going to get a switch and I have a packet station. So I'm going to, when I'm not on the radio myself, I'm going to switch it over to packet and the packets. I have a complete packet station sitting here now and I'm, I'm ready to put it on the air. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Dedicate that antenna to the packet. Don't worry about voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to get a, a, a two way switch and I can switch between the two units, uh, depending on what I want to do. That way I can use both. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I hope you, uh, you know, I hope you can hit me up here on the north side. Okay. Uh, we'll... I, I uh, tested it out once and I did contact you. I left you, I, you, you uh, emailed me back that you had seen my connect to your system. Yeah, and I, I just didn't, wasn't around to see, you know, how good, a, how good a signal it was, but hopefully it's plenty good. Yeah, we'll know about it in a little bit because I have everything sitting over uh, the table here and uh, all ready to start hooking up. Cool. Very good. Charles, whereabouts are you located at? Um, I'm uh, about two blocks from uh, Gunderson on the south side. Okay. Hopefully you, you shouldn't have any problems then connecting over to Ken. <clears throat> yeah. Well, like I said, I did connect to him once uh, before when I was messing around getting the wires built. And he did... Uh, talk to me about it later uh, by email, but I didn't have uh, radio on all the time at that time. So I'm going to have it on most of the time when I'm not using my voice radio. So I'll have that all set up. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, good. Okay. Is there anybody else? Otherwise, we will uh, put this to sleep. And let's see here. I'm just checking one chat box, question answer. Oh, Charles, you could you go you got one more follow up question, you can go right ahead. You just unmute yourself. Uh no, I didn't did I hit the thing to ask another question? I didn't mean to. Oh, I just see your hand is up. That's okay. There. <laughs> I forgot to lower the hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Yep. Uh, Dave, uh, you want to say something? Maybe, maybe he just, he just put his hand back down. So maybe he, uh, he did the same thing. Oh, he's got his hand back up. Um, you can unmute yourself, Dave, and 
say something if you need to. Hey, Ken, I, there, you, uh, there you are. Back when I was back, I used to use something called wormholes. Do they still exist? What was that again? Wormholes. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as I know, wormholes is just uh, internet connections. Um, and yes. Uh, I used to use one from Kenosha. To, uh, I, would, I would make a connect like four different nodes together into a node in Illinois, then that node connected to a wormhole. I, I had a mailbox on UCLA from Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, using that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I my uh, that BPQ system I run uh, has got uh, HF port because there's there's multiple things you can do when you connect to my station. Uh, one of them is cross connect. You can cr you connect connect on uh, on VHF and go out to the world on HF or vice versa, or you can uh, use uh, the internet port and uh, AXIP, and I I have to do that uh, because we we can't get out of this area to the rest of Wisconsin. What I normally because there's just not enough stations to to go through. I uh, I use that to uh, connect to somebody over uh, either in Wisconsin Rapids or maybe around um, uh, Friendship. And uh, then from their station, I can start hopping around on VHF. So, or I, and, and actually I, there's, I've got connections the same way uh, all over Europe. Um, some, I believe in South America and all over the country, all over the country um, uh, right now. So that stuff is still out there. Okay, thank you. Your mic. You're on mute. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I am just seeing that there are no other questions. I don't see any. Um, so I would just like to take this opportunity and thank everybody who's still logged on that uh, for joining us tonight. And I'm sure um, Ken had fun as well. I am not sure if he has done Zoom trainings before, but he did a very good job. I think you'll all un agree with that. And a nice presentation. And again, he reach out to him. He's a great resource and a vast knowledge there in Packet Radio. If you have questions, even with the first step, I mean, just, just, just contact him and um, he'll get you on your way. I know he's had a poke and prod me for a couple of years and uh, it finally happened, right, Ken? <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was kind of the, the win-win connection uh, because uh, for anybody, you know, around here uh, with the uh, Windlink RMS gateway, uh, you can connect uh, from Windlink uh, through through my system. Um, so I, on VHF or on VHF, but on packet or what's uh, a sound, another sound modem called VARA, and it's VARA F FM. So that's kind of how how we snagged both uh, Kelly and Sean. Really, was v through the the Windlink connection there. So it worked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hunk line and sinker. It's it's interesting. It's a uh, it's um. A welcomed, um, I don't know, just uh, something new to discover in the ham radio world as there's all sorts of modes to try out. And uh, this was actually, it, it took a little bit to get going, but it surprisingly didn't take that much to, to, to get get it. I had an aha moment after a few times of trying and, um, and, uh, I'm still a very, very, very uh, young novice, um, and I've only experimented with a tip of it uh, with Packet, and still got a lot to learn, but uh, appreciate Ken and everyone else joining us tonight, and I think, um, think that will be it.
So appreciate everyone. And I am going to put this meeting to bed. And uh, again, I'm going to, if you need uh, slides, copies of slides, um, let me know. I'll send them out to you. Um, if you know someone that would like a recording, the copy of this recording, let me know. And um, other than that, I bid you adieu. Thanks, guys. 73s. 73s. Yeah.